By far the hardest part of starting a freelance web design business is getting clients. And so for me, I'm working on getting my first paid client and the first one is especially difficult because I haven't really proven myself yet. And so I get these bad thoughts that occasionally linger in my head saying, well, you're not a good enough designer. Who's gonna pay for your services? One way that I've tried to offset this is by doing a couple of projects for free. And so I had this free design gig where I was designing a marketing website for someone, but it was when I was first learning Webflow, so it wasn't exactly my finest work. And truth be told, at this point, I just don't really wanna do free design work for people. I find that it's sort of bad on both the designer end and the client end. On the designer end, I honestly feel like I put in less effort effort when I know that it's a free project. And from the client perspective, they don't really take it as seriously either. And so I am now going all in on starting my quest to find paid design clients. And in this video, I'm going to show you my exact process on how I'm going to achieve that. The first thing to know is that there are basically two avenues to getting clients, the paid method and the organic method. And the paid method would really just involve me doing ads, but because I'm just starting out, it wouldn't really make much sense for me to run ads because it requires upfront costs. And because I'm not generating any profit at the moment, I would just be bleeding money. So I'm not gonna be doing the paid approach at this point, but when I do start making money and start having a more steady revenue stream, then that could be something I could implement in the future. The organic method can involve several things. A couple of the main strategies I know of are doing cold outreach and creating content. The organic method overall often takes longer, but it's free. <laughs> and so for me, just starting out, it just makes more sense for me to adopt that approach. And as far as the specific strategy, I'm going to be primarily using the cold outreach strategy. Creating content is a good strategy, actually a great strategy, but it's more of a long-term strategy because it takes a long time to build a following. With that being said though, I do think that every designer should start creating content for a huge variety of reasons. Uh, not really going to be the scope of this video, but if you do want me to go in depth about that topic, just leave a comment below and I'd be happy to do that. So let's talk cold outreach. If you're unfamiliar, it's basically sending a message to a individual or business with which you have no prior relationship with. So this could be through email, LinkedIn message, Instagram DM, or really any other form of social media. And as with any form of outreach, there are good ways to do this and there are shitty ways to do this. And I'm sure you've probably experienced uh, a shitty way of cold outreach as a recipient. I know for me, oftentimes in LinkedIn, I'll get these messages from people asking me to book a call with them to do any kind of service that they're offering, whether it's run LinkedIn ads or build a, I don't know, social media marketing agency. I don't know. I get ads for all sorts of things. And if you've experienced that those kinds of messages on LinkedIn, ask yourself, how often have you been tempted by one of those messages? How often have you been tempted to follow through with any of those messages? If you're anything like me, probably not at all. And that's because it's a shitty outreach strategy. And the reason it's bad is because a lot of those random messages that I get through LinkedIn fail to utilize a very simple law of social psychology, and that is the law of reciprocity. The law of reciprocity simply states that when someone does something for you, you feel inclined to do something to return the favor. So a simple example of this is, let's say you're going out to the bar with a friend and they say, hey, drinks on me. 
That's pretty great, right? So they get the first round of drinks, and then next thing you know, you feel sort of inclined to return the favor. So maybe you buy the next round of drinks, or maybe you buy an appetizer to share. So because they did something for you, you feel inclined to return the favor. So how am I applying this to getting freelance web design clients? Well, the process that I'm using involves four major steps. The first step is finding local businesses that have busted websites or maybe just websites that don't look good, probably don't perform well. The second step is to create a site audit video outlining the ways that their site can be improved upon. Uh, number three is to email that local business with a link to that video site audit. And then number four is to follow up with them multiple times. So let's dive into each of these in more detail. And to make this easier for me to edit, let's just go to my computer and then I'm just gonna screen share each of these steps in detail so you can see how I actually implement it. Okay, so the first thing that I do is I go onto Google Maps and I search for local businesses. I recently have been focusing on finding massage therapists in the area to help improve their site and do site audits for them. Reason I chose them is I am I have a background in physical therapy and it's kind of like a parallel profession. There's not as many physical therapists as there are massage therapists, so because there are just more massage therapists in my area, I figured I would target them for now just because there are so many of them. So what I'll do is I'll just search for massage therapist. And the whole goal is I'm just trying to find places to look at their, take a quick look at their website. So if we go to this Carlton Body Works, I'll look through here. I haven't looked at this in advanced, um, so I have, don't really know what the site looks like. But as I'm looking at the site, I'm just thinking, okay, what are some ways that this site could be improved upon and what are some like real um, critical things that need to be adjusted? So right off the bat, looking at this, some things that I think would be important is having like a clear call to action here, something like book a session. There's nothing really here that has to do with booking a session. There is a booking link up here that I can see, but it doesn't really stand out from anything. And how is booking different from purchase? That seems to be a little bit confusing. That's more of a UX problem. Uh, and so that can be confusing. And so scrolling down, it's just a matter of, there is a booking link here, but that needs to be moved to the hero in my opinion. So it's just what I'm doing now of just looking through and just seeing what are some things that need to be modernized and what are some things that need to be just uh, allow for increased business um, from a website like this? And so for this, I would usually like to see a contact form on the homepage, doesn't have to be there. And I see there's not even a contact link up here, which is not very good. So that would be another thing I would address. And so once I do that, I basically will pull up a sticky notes or some sort of a a Google Doc and I will type out five things that need to be improved about this site. And so once I do that, then I have the raw materials to create a site audit. And so to do that, you can do this using Loom, uh, which is just a, if you don't know what that is, it is a website where you can capture videos, oh, I'm sorry, screen shares uh, with yourself on video. I don't really use that. The problem with Loom is that there's a five minute time limit. And typically I like to keep my videos below five minutes for these site audits, but in the chance that it goes above that, then Loom will cut it off. So what I like to do is actually use OBS. So that's what I'm using to create this video. It's gonna look really messed up having this on here, by the way. Um, <laughs> and so anyway, this is what I use to make all of my screen share videos because I can save these locally. And the quality is very high, uh, both the audio and the video. So I use this, the learning curve for this is higher, but I find that it just offers me more flexibility and I can still have the video cut out uh, that Loom offers as well. And so anyway, I use that. And then once I create the site audit video outlining the 
five key improvements that their site can have to generate more business. I then upload it to the site called Streamable. The reason I use Streamable is because it allows me to post to host videos that aren't public to like a general audience. Like I don't want to post these videos to a YouTube channel because then anyone can see them. And even if I put them as unlisted, they show up in my video feed for like my content that I've uploaded and I don't want that to be the case. So I'd rather use this platform, which allows me to copy any of these links and I can share that with the business that I'm making a site audit for. And it's just a private video that they can watch. And so once I create the video and I upload it to Streamable, I then create an email to send to that business. So a key thing with this is just making sure you find the name of the person who owns the company, if possible, so that you can direct the email to a specific person. And then I actually created this using uh, ChatGPT, but I heavily revised the wording so that it sounds more conversational. And so I have everything included, including the subject line. I always like to put an emoji in the beginning of a subject. I just find for me, when I see an email that has a subject line that has an emoji in the front, for whatever reason, I just pay more attention to it. So I utilize that with this. And then I just create an email. I mean, you can probably read this, pause the video if you want, but it just introduces myself saying I'm a web designer and telling them that I've done a free site audit for them. So giving them value for free. Uh, and then I post the video to, I post the link to the streamable video. And so that's what I do from then. And then from there, it's a matter of following up uh, multiple times. And so from there, what I do is I will send um, a follow-up email about, I mean, it depends, usually like three to four days after I send the actual video. And I'll pull this up. So this is a way to keep organized when it comes, when it comes to following up. And so what this is, it is Trello. If you've never used this, it's a project management application. And what I've done is I've created all these different columns for different aspects of the my cold outreach. So if I sent a site audit, my the first site audit, I'll put it there and then I'll put details about them. What what's the website name? What is the owner's name and email address as well as a link to the site audit and then I'll comment when the site audit was sent just so that I know when that was done and when I need to send a follow-up email. And then once I send a, my first follow-up, I move it to here. And then my second follow-up, once I send that, I move it to there. And so those I have templates for as well. So this is the first site audit. Again, I have a subject line with an emoji where you're able to see my video. And I just basically reiterate what I talked about in my first email, just saying, hey, in case you missed it, here's a link to the video. And I always try to encourage them that it's a valuable use of their time to look at that site audit because it provides actionable steps to improve their site and ultimately get more business. I, I try to make an emphasis on the fact that looking at the site audit is going to help you get more business. And so that's the key thing there. And then I also have a template for the uh, second follow-up that I send. Again, kind of like reiterating the thing I kind of emphasize with this so that these don't seem too much like carbon copies of each other's. And the second follow-up, I talk about, hey, you know, things can get busy, things can get lost in the email. Totally understand that. But hey, the site audit is still available for you to view, and I really think it'll help you out. And so again, I put that here, um, and then they're able to see... Uh, Again, the site audit if they haven't gotten a chance to do so. Now, I also have two sections here for declined. So if they send me an email saying, hey, not interested, I would move it there. And if they are interested, then I have an accepted column. The only thing I have not figured out is what I do if after I sent this second follow-up. So I don't know if I should send a third follow-up because I also don't want to beat a dead horse, so to speak. Um, and I don't, but I don't know. I don't want to seem spammy, but I also feel like I should probably keep following up. Some somewhat of a limiting belief I have to get over. 
But this is sort of the process that I use when it comes to doing cold outreach. So in a nutshell, finding a location on Google Maps, taking a look at their site to see what can be improved upon it, crafting an email, and ultimately creating a template for an email that you can just reuse over and over again so that it becomes really easy to just pump these out and then keeping organized on Trello and then ultimately sending follow-up emails to the business. And that's my process with cold outreach. So this is the process moving forward for me getting clients. My goal is to eventually get so efficient at doing these site audit videos that I'll be able to reach out to 50 businesses per week, which would be 200 per month, which would be awesome. And I'm realistically planning for a 1% conversion rate, meaning that if I send 200 of these site audits a month, then I'll gain roughly two clients per month. And at that point, if that actually starts to happen, I'll have to start thinking about how to juggle multiple clients, but that's not anything that I need to worry about right now. And I'll definitely update you when I do land my first client because then I'll share all the logistical things of how I asked for the sale, how I set up a contract, and all those other little things that I just haven't really had a chance to do yet. And so if you found this video to be helpful any, in any way, it would mean a lot if you hit the describe, describe, subscribe button. Wow, can't even finish the video right. Uh, and if you wanna join a group of like-minded designers all trying to level up, I have a Discord community called the Designers Den, so definitely feel free to join that. And if you want to see sort of the my decision to go all in on freelance design, I have a video that you can check out here. It's just a raw video of just me sharing my thoughts. And I had a, I had a lot of fun just making the video. Um, and so until next time, I will see you in the next video. Take care.